the December 12 meeting of the Urbana Free Library Board of Trustees to come to order. Roll call. Here. 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 Are there any additions, corrections, or modifications to the agenda? Hearing none, we'll move on to, there is no call for executive session. We'll move on to the public comments. Do I have public that we'd like to address the group? Wait, did you approve the agenda? Did you approve the agenda? Oh. And did you want to add the appointment, new business? I guess we, there was no changes, so we... Did you want new business to be added? Do we want what added? Did you want a new business item for the nominating committee? I just thought I would do it in my report. Okay. I guess though we ought to approve the agenda in no conditions or corrections. Do I hear a motion to approve the agenda? So, so moved. Second. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Thank you. We'll move ahead. I can't get caught up in all this. Uh, <laughs> public comments. Anybody want to speak at this time? No. Okay. Presentation. The first presentation we have is by Scott Tess from the city on our energy savings. You got it. Please. Thank you. Um, stand over here, I guess, um, and try and talk to you and gesture at the... At the <coughs> <laughs> <laughs> I'm, stand over there. Well, if I stand here, I'll be in front. Oh, this might work. Yeah. Very nice to be with you all tonight. Um, thank you for carving out a little time. I want to share some information about a project that the city and the library have been working on um, since March <coughs> this year. It's a guaranteed energy savings project. Please. Um, the purpose of the project is um, to uh, take advantage of a specific pathway uh, allowed in state statute to do facilities improvements. Um, we are particularly focusing on critical deferred maintenance. Um, we're looking at avoiding emergency repairs and replacements at both city facilities and the library. Um, we're working to improve public and staff safety as well as the comfort of the environment in our buildings. And uh, we're also working to reduce utility bill expenditures. Um, some of the benefits of a guaranteed energy savings project, and you see DESP, that's what that means are that you get a, a turnkey or design build type of service. So rather than having a procurement for an engineering service and then a procurement for the actual construction of what the engineers design, um, and then having to manage that construction, you get all of that in one big package from one vendor. Um, we're working to reduce energy consumption and the pollution that comes along with energy consumption, um, utility bill expenditures, um, building occupant comfort, lighting quality. Um, we're also hoping that you know, by reducing some of the maintenance, we're going to redeploy staff to other deferred maintenance. And we're also working to use utility bill and maintenance savings to help pay for a loan that pays for the project. So the procedure for a guaranteed energy savings project is outlined in the state statute. I'm not going to describe that for you. If you're really interested, it's actually not that long of a read, um, but you can do that. Uh, it describes a qualifications-based selection procedure. The city has gone through that procedure with the library and selected a vendor. Some of the important elements of the procedure is that the energy services companies guarantee energy savings with some limitations that we'll talk about. Um, also, the statute provides that the project is paid for itself within 10 years. Uh, we received, we're very fortunate to receive some excellent technical assistance as we developed the request for proposal for this guaranteed energy savings project that resulted in selecting a vendor. Um, that technical assistance with a recent state uh, law that was passed moved from DCEO, Department of Commerce and Economic Opportunity, to Ameren, Illinois. Ameren uh, declined to continue that technical assistance. So after we got the request for proposal out, we lost our technical assistance, but still very valuable while we had it. The statute also provides that uh, a, an engineer must, or an architect must review the contract, um, review all the documents regarding the Guaranteed Energy Savings Project. 
And so we're using um, an outside private uh, third party engineering company that's going to review these documents on our behalf. Thanks. Uh, the vendor that we selected is here tonight. Their name is Control Technology Solutions. They're a privately held company. They work specifically on performance-based or guaranteed energy savings type projects. Um, you can see they have a large number of buildings over, uh, over a decade of experience. Um, so very experienced. They're, they're a participant and certified in the National Professional Association for these types of companies. Direct owner involvement. Uh, local dedicated project management. Um, they have a, a person who just lives, I think, in the county, is that right? Lives in Champaign County, um, who's on their team and would work on our project. Um, they do mechanical building automation um, and design, engineering design in-house for their, within their own company. Um, they use non-proprietary solutions. We're not necessarily getting locked into some particular company's building automation system. And uh, they offer extended service maintenance and training support. The typical projects that are done with a guaranteed energy savings project include heating, ventilation, air conditioning, controls and automations of the same, uh, interior lighting, so that's like this, and exterior and street lighting outside, so it would be your parking lot. Uh, measurement and verification <coughs> follows the installation of these projects. Um, and that includes following the standard protocols that are agreed upon industry best practices listed here. Um, what we receive out of that is an overview of facilities, improvement measures, utility and net bill, utility bill analysis, and um, savings charts. That measurement and verification leads to how the vendor demonstrates that they have met the guaranteed savings that they provide. And some savings are by formula. And what that means is um, we're not going to measure them after the fact. We're going to decide, we're going to model the, the, the before and after conditions, and we agree in the contract what those savings are. So, for instance, maintenance savings is a little hard to track after the fact. For instance, the light bulbs that you don't buy on a year to year basis because you now have light bulbs that last 10, 15, 20 years is a little bit hard to follow in a, on a bills basis, on an invoice basis. So we model that and agree to those savings. Other savings are actually measured with utility bills and guarantee. So those would be HVAC, heating, ventilation, air conditioning savings, and energy savings that are associated with that, and also the interior lighting that is associated um, with energy savings. Those will be on the bill, and they're on the same bill, right? Because they're on the, the same utility meter. Um, important for our project, we are not including in any internal labor savings. We're not counting that, we're not adding it up. The reason for that is we have, I'll speak for the city and, and maybe it's true for the library, we have a lot of deferred maintenance and as soon as uh, we um, clear some of these projects that we're uh, projecting in this particular project out and get them done, we're moving on to the other deferred maintenance. We're not, we're not able to uh, reduce staff hours. So we're just not counting that as a, as a savings in our, in our model. Um, what maintenance savings you do see here includes uh, things like avoided, avoided material costs. So um, the, the fluorescent lights that you don't have to replace every year because you have LED lights that last 10 years, 15 years. Um, the fluorescent light disposal that you don't have to pay every year. Those are the types of maintenance savings. Um, <coughs> another savings that we're also modeling is calls for service. So um, you know, for the library, if the, if the chiller needs um, someone to come in and retune it on an, uh, uh, you know, great, with great frequency um, because it's um, aging, that's a real savings that you're not going to pay when you start out, start fresh with a new piece of equipment. If the guaranteed savings aren't met, the vendor pays the shortfall. It's in the state statute, um, pursuant to the limitations I described above. Um, but that that ensures that the vendor has a strong interest in making sure that what they're presenting is going to be accurate. Uh, most cities conduct the measurement and verification for the guarantee for one or two years. The reason for this is uh, cities presume that if the guarantee is met in the first year, 
it's probably going to be true throughout. And likewise, if there's ever going, if there's going to be a problem, if there's a flaw in the design, if there's a if there's a material problem in the equipment, you're going to see it right away. You're going to see it in the first year. And so, rather than pay for that measurement and verification for five years, 10 years, 15 years, 20 years, they pay for it long enough to know that the system was designed, installed, constructed, commissioned accurately. So in summary, um, this is a single bundle of lots of different facilities improvements. Um, the bidding and procurement is stipulated by state statute. You pay for the project up front with a loan, and then you pay the loan off with your maintenance and energy savings, and you can also add the capital improvement dollars that you've already budgeted. And as I mentioned, utility bill savings and maintenance savings pay that loan down. This is where we're at in the process right now. Um, everything in gray we've already done. Um, and then we're at this point now in this investment grade audit. We have a draft investment grade audit from the vendor. What we're doing is evaluating that audit, determining the scope that we want to final, finally set on. So there may be projects that um, are worthy to do, but they don't, they, they're, they're hurting the payback period. There may be projects that we're interested in doing, but they don't really have any savings um, on a timeline that makes sense. So we're, we're you know, uh, balancing those compromises and trade-offs presently, and also um, working on, on the, the pricing and the cash flow analysis for, for the projects. Um, next, we need to uh, work with the city to line up financing, and um, then the state statute provides for the city council to approve the contract. This is a, just a zoom in of the same. Um, time is of the essence for uh, proceeding with this contract because we want to be able to do construction in kind of the seasonal um, shoulder season. So when it's um, when we're not using a lot of heating or not using a lot of cooling, because those are the systems that we're going to be taking offline and, and repairing and replacing. Um, this is a, a snapshot of the projects, um, the facilities improvements that we're considering for the library. So interior lighting, so going from a fluorescent to an LED. Exterior lighting, going from a high intensity discharge to uh, an LED. Um, air handling units upgrades, chiller upgrade, um, electrical panel, uh, building, ceiling, and window upgrades. So this is all, these are all projects that the vendor has studied and um, found uh, potential improvements. Now we're evaluating um, the efficacy of all of those. So the project scope um, that we that I've shown here. By the way, there's a bunch of that previous slide. I have four of them for different city buildings, but I didn't include them here because it's not your particular concern. But we're doing that same sort of thing with the city facilities. Um, the project scope represents. I believe this is this is from you know the presentation of the city council. It's certainly true, and I think it's true for the for the library as well. That the scope represents only a portion of expected future city capital expenses. Um, so we're not doing we're not uh, you know creating a brand new building that um, won't have any problems. There's still other projects uh, that we'll be working towards in the, in the future. Um, the scope and financing of these projects are mutually dependent, right? Um, so depending on what kind of financing is available, that means we can do more or less work. And also depending on um, the scope of the project, how many, pro how many projects we want to bundle <coughs> together determines how much of the loan we need and what kind of financing we need. The state statute uh, provides for a 20-year payback period. Um, and, and that's sort of the legal max. So that's the maximum number of years we're considering. Um, to accomplish the scope that we've shown here for you and, and the, the sort of the maximal scope for the city, uh, a 20 year loan would be necessary. So that's what we're working towards. Um, a shorter loan period would mean that we'd have to reduce the scope, that is, reduce the number of projects in the bundle. Um, tonight, there's no particular action you need to take. Uh, we're just here, myself, and library staff are just here to um, answer any questions you have and um, you know, move the library a little bit closer towards approving um, this final scope that we decided. With that, I'll take any questions you have.
I, I want to make sure I understand uh, that you're creating a model in the first one to two years of how much energy savings you expect to see in the future. Okay, so what I don't understand is, don't mechanical things deteriorate after one to two years? I mean, sure. how do you figure out that the longer down the road, the more expensive it might be? All the projects are, are actually modeled in terms of energy savings and financials on 20 years. Oh, so one to two years is what we're going to measure for oh, the, I see. the energy guarantee. Okay, got it. Thank you. Sure. Okay, this is a city. The city council has to approve this. Do we have to approve our portion of it? I think even if you didn't have to, that's probably... Well, but I mean, approved. we're going in with and they're... I mean, I don't know how it's all going to work, but I, I assume that we still have to say, yes, go with our portion of it. Absolutely, and we'll be yeah. back to have this have a, a, a deeper dive on this conversation after we just determine a final scope and determine financing and so forth. So you will hear about this again before any final decision. Okay, what makes a difference between a 10-year and a 20-year uh, payback? It determines, so if you have to pay back a loan within 10 years, um, is that dependent upon what you can get for a loan? Oh, sure. Uh, yeah, it, it just depends on what's going to be available to okay. the city in the marketplace. Can I speak to that also? Kurt Borman at the city, one of the three city attorneys, wrote a memo for Anka and me, sorry, Anka and me, um, about financing options <coughs> for these purposes for the library because the library is not the city and there are different statutory obligations for the library. So we just got this, we're okay. reading it, and we will follow through with you on what your, you can get a mortgage, you can ask the city to raise the levy. There are things you can do, but they're not exactly the same as the city. So you're saying for our improvements, we would have a separate loan? That is one option. Okay, so that's a long time span for paying back the loan and for getting everything done. <clears throat> I'm assuming the RFP, you, you did have a certain scope for it, and so there's going to be lots of technical changes between for what you mm -hmm. proposed right now, and then by the time we get to put things in, and mm -hmm. oh, that's a good example, all right, LED lighting, all of a sudden we're learning, eh, they might be interfering with wireless more than we thought, yeah. so uh, maybe you know, that scope gets changed a little bit, you know, if, if they're trying to get much better reports on, you know, what type of LEDs, what type of Wi-Fi and all the frequencies and where the EMI interference is. So what's the flexibility to change things in mid-course? Um, describe by what you mean by mid-course. So mid-course so, in this procurement yeah, so you, yeah, so, well, you're, you're, you're going to put something in the scope for what we, what projects the library would do. Mm -hmm. So you gotta put a budget figure to that. Sure. And then we're gonna have agree on saying, oh, this looks good. And then just because it is such a long time period, maybe there's a different technology used for whatever the capital improvement that was going to be made. But there was an original budget for different capital improvement. Yeah. So where is the flexibility to say, oh, this is what we put in originally, and maybe this doesn't make sense anymore because we're now 10 years into it. Okay, so you're thinking on that. I'm thinking, I'm thinking of the full yeah. course yeah. of yeah. How, does, how does technology age? Yes, yeah. because um, technology is behind all these facilities yeah. these days, you know, especially with building automation. With this project, technology will age at the exact same rate as if you do this procurement in any other way. So if you um, put it, uh, bid your chiller out, it pay for design and, and bid your chill, the construction for your chiller out, you're going to get the same chiller. And it's going to have the same lifespan. And if some new uh, air conditioning technology arises, it's going to arise no matter how you procure it. Um, same with, with uh, LEDs. Um, lighting, um, no matter how you procure it, it's going to, uh, technology may change however it will. And can't predict it. Um, but what you what you give up if you don't make the change is all the potential savings before that technology happens. Um, so there, there's an opportunity, there's a missed opportunity cost if you don't upgrade your technology when you have the chance. So um, Scott, I think uh, maybe Barbara, this will help you understand it. And something you said last night, is, or Beth, I'm sorry, uh, that uh, the way 
uh, Scott was explaining it to us, I mean, these aren't projects that are supposed to take place over 20 years. The projects will be done in nine to yeah. one, year. one year. All projects will be completed in one, in one year. It just takes 19 more years for your savings to catch up to the costs of all of those installations when, when they occur. That's why the loan is so long. Okay. It's Man, not okay. that 10 they, years. They it's not that 10 years from now we're going to start to install something else. It'll all happen right away. It just takes that long for the savings to make up for the cost. Okay. No, thanks, Jerry. Thank you for that. I didn't understand. All right, Dad. No, this is exactly as I have. A couple of questions. One to follow up there. So, even a year is, is some time, and tech, some of these technologies move fairly fast. How involved is a city engineer? Uh, energy expert in the sort of ongoing implementation of this to, you know, say, you know, have to say, oh shit, you know, we should do something else, you know, or sure. is that part of the process? So, uh, so a, a potential scenario scenario is um, the library board in the city approve a contract and a loan, um, let's say the end of January. Um, the vendor is going to immediately order some of the big pieces of equipment because they have six to eight weeks of lag time before they can you know, be delivered to the site. Um, and they're gonna line up subcontractors, um, they're gonna finalize uh, product selections, and as soon as that season hits, that is advantageous for those individual projects, they're gonna install them. So you know, the, depending on how mobilization goes, um, you know, maybe they do LED lighting right, right at the beginning, or maybe they save it at the end because it's not as weather dependent. Um, but they're going to try and do the heating and cooling on that shoulder season. Um, they may do the super priority projects um, in spring and then maybe put off some of the other ones to fall. But everything's going to probably be done in that first year. So we're talking about pretty quick mobilization. There's, I don't think any, any technological breakthroughs are going to go from the lab to commercial availability in that time frame. Um, so some of these things, some of the major items, we actually have seen some preliminary look from the Henneman outfit on what they thought it would cost and so on. Um, any idea how the scope of what's included in, in this plan compares with those big chunks, Chiller, for example, in the, in the Henneman preliminary estimates? Uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm Trying to remember those numbers, I, I think um, you know, for the library, the one of the critical items is the chiller. Yeah. Um, and I think that was um, pricing out, and, and there's preliminary pricing. And as we get closer and refine the design, that can change and hopefully improve. But I think that started out at 185,000 range. That's not really I think that's kind of the range that, that that's come into. I think oh. there was, I think Henneman had 134,000, <coughs> but didn't include engineering, which is some amount of money. And um, just a, a, maybe a very technical question. Um, if you plot various types of energy use over the course of the year, month by month, um, you guys track down how much is you know, reheating <coughs> during the shoulder months of, and how much is gas during the winter, and et cetera, et cetera, you know. Going through that to sort of know where the, where the energy use is right now. Yes, so they're, they're doing um, energy modeling. It's in the draft investment grade audit. Um, and, and some of the things that they're gonna identify are gonna be improvements actually in, in tuning the system um, to operate efficiently. Um, one of the critical elements for the city building is actually a building formation system. Ours is outdated. Um, so some of that is just controls um, and making sure that we're heating where, where and when we need to heat, cooling where and when we need to heat. Right. I was just thinking, in terms of deciding where the biggest savings are, uh, it makes sense to start off knowing you know, how much goes directly to heating, how much goes directly to cooling, how much goes to this very unfortunate bad design where we reheat because we because the system doesn't use the waste heat uh, as as we're dehumidifying? Yeah. Um, the type of anal those. energy analysis and modeling you're talking about is what CTS does in house. Okay. 
as I understand it, we will be given by next month's meeting the list <clears throat> of items and we, we can choose what things and prioritize, let's say, the items that will get, enter into our part of the project. Is that what works or what? I mean, we're saying, okay, we're, we, I think we've already said, you know, the chiller has got to be <laughs> there. Um, the windows <laughs> might not be there. I mean, we might decide that we cannot get a loan for that amount and that that would not be a part of the list. We'll be given those shortly. Well, staff, what we're working on right now is okay. analyzing the efficacy of the projects, the, which projects are most critical. Um, which ones aren't going to fit and, and can be set aside, and also the financials. So it's going to really depend on the loaning mechanism because a payback period on 20 years, if a project costs $100,000 and it saves the library $500 a year, you're not going to make that back in no. either 10 years or 20 years. No. So what we're looking at are those numbers to see are there projects that are that great ideas but won't save the library enough money in the long run. Currently, the windows look like they're in that ballpark. So we're looking at the different window options. Right, right. We, we have learned a lot more about the windows than we knew about the windows before, right. and just, our window options, if, at the very least. Yeah, just a <laughs> comment on the windows that there were some preliminary estimates for total historical quality mm -hmm. uh, upgrades, and there was no way those would come anywhere close to payback. Um, but there's you know, another category of options, which is acrylic inserts that get almost the same R value and look like they'd be right in the ballpark for um, uh, payback, both in, in terms of energy use and comfort. So, um, what we've been able, or what the vendor's been able to model so far, shows a very small uh, annual payback for uh, a Windows um, improvement, um, you know, on the order of hundreds of dollars a year. Um, so you, there's not that's, a lot. That's interesting contrast with what government websites say <laughs> in terms of um, energy savings from improved windows, particularly if the windows are really not only poor insulators but leaky. The leakiness is, a, is, is something that we may be able to address at a, at a much lower cost. So if we go to the outside of the windows and redo the ceiling, mm -hmm. the caulking, and so forth. Um, that, that may be some of the leakage, and that's very cost effective. Okay. Does all this assume that we're keeping the same business hours? Yes. Same business hours, occupancy. Okay, I'm sorry, but um, so just to review, is this a, a state mandated or state suggested effort? I mean, where does it come from, and is it is it just related to energy? Why why is there? I mean, it, when you said deferred maintenance, I'm thinking, I know what the university's got in deferred maintenance, but you're not talking about defer, all deferred maintenance. You're talking about energy. How do those two exactly. relate? Well, so there is a very specific state statute that governs this process. It's fairly short. Um, you know, why the state chose to to describe this particular procurement, I don't know. Um, but what it what it provides for is if, uh, if a city or, or a school district, other municipalities, um, wants to engage in a performance-based contract, that is a contract where the performance pays most or all of the costs, um, they have to follow this partic particular process. And it's, it's a due diligence process, really. This sort of, we do this and we save X number of dollars and so, but it's not, is it all have to be related to energy saving? Well, if there are, no, if there are other savings that you can demonstrate, you can use those as part of your payback. And that's, you know, sort of, so maintenance savings. So uh, equipment that we didn't buy, um, equipment that we didn't dispose of, those are savings, and we're accepting some of those in our cash flow analysis. The savings that we're not accepting, not including, is labor savings. It's legal to do that. Right. But we're not going to be laying off anyone. We're just going to be redeploying them to other projects. But you wouldn't include a, a new roof. If the roof, uh, if the roof had some financial savings, yeah, you could. It wouldn't have to be energy related. It could be like, so we don't have to replace the building because it's not wet now or something. I mean, like, I'm I'm sorry. I'm not trying. I'm trying to be silly, yeah. but it's like. 
Okay, so, um, but it would seem like there'd be gray areas there as to what was building maintenance and what was energy related or what had payback associated with it, yeah? I mean, you, you'd have to make some calls about, yeah. well, we need to do that, but you're also talking about diverting the labor to other deferred maintenance, yeah. So, Okay, so um, why is it better that we participate with this project through the city if we're going to have to take out our own loan and pay for it, I presume? Why would we do that as opposed to going to a vendor and saying this? Is it just for this guaranteed, guaranteed savings? Sure. Well, there are a couple benefits. Um, one is instead of the city doing a procurement and library doing a procurement, we're, we're doing you know, okay. So that's two, we're doing one. Um, that's a savings. Two, um, the library already leverages the facilities um, maintenance services from the city to some degree. Is that a fair statement? Mm -hmm. um, so we're already kind of engaged together, working together on facilities related issues. Um, and then third is, is the support that we may or may not provide um, for financing. So, um, okay, so that's another issue, like the city may provide some support for the financing, but that's well, pretty... In, in terms of professional assistance, possibly what, what we're going to do in terms of financing is, is uh, keep the projects, you know, library projects and city projects separate so that the library is in some way subsidizing city improvements and vice versa. Vice versa yeah. so, um, so it wouldn't really be necessarily cheaper. I mean, there might be some s systemic savings by doing it all in one. Um, but it's still going to cost us. The audits that you're doing or the monitoring one to two years, it just seems like why would you not, I mean, since that's the critical element here, you, why wouldn't you not do it further out? Or is, that's sort of my question. is there like a, I mean, could you do it anytime you want? Does, do they have to prove it year after year that they're saving money? Or do you, after those first couple of years, you don't hear from them, you just... Uh, the monitoring and verification is to demonstrate that the guarantee savings have been met. But that has a cost. And so you want to do some of that because you want to make sure that the system was designed, installed, commissioned properly. But you may not want to pay all that reoccurring cost every year mm -hmm. for 20 years um, when the likelihood is if it's working properly in the first year or two, it's designed, installed, commissioned properly. But it seems like if you've got a 20 year loan, it wouldn't be bad to maybe think of a five year out thing to check up on it and stuff, sure. you know? Well, Assumptions are I mean, I assume, I think it's very reliable that, for example, the energy uses of, of a different uh, lighting system would be highly reproducible from year to year. Um, but I presume that even if you've decided, yeah, the routine savings are meeting specs, that if all the light bulbs blow up or the you know furnace catches fire or something like that, that one can revisit that conclusion yeah. Yeah. without having to do monitoring. Yeah. Yeah. So, sorry, one last little question. So if we went out and did this on our own, it wouldn't be as efficient because it would be a separate procurement, but would vendors offer the same kind of service to us, like the guaranteed savings over X? I mean, we could set it up that way if we wanted. Yeah, there's an industry. This is an industry of that. multiple vendors. We had four vendors um, make proposals and present qualifications. <coughs> the state statute is a kind of a blended procurement. Uh, vendors make proposal. Uh, um, they actually visit your facilities, um, take all of your data, and make energy saving proposals. And then they also pre present uh, experience and qualifications. And the statute provides that a selection and a qualifications based selection is made based on both of those. So this has been a this has been a competitive procurement. Okay. Um, and you know doing a, one bigger project with two entities um, sharing one project management may have some savings in it as well in terms of the overall project and individual projects. If I can just Real quickly, they said they manage it for us, Jeff, which is a, a huge savings of time and expertise for us. So the city staff would run the project management from their side. So that is that is not insignificant. Right. Yeah, that was my question. Is what was the staff saving? <clears throat> 
Chris, I, I just have a yeah, general yeah, um, please. point of clarification. <clears throat> GESP, is that something that was developed by some national association or, and has it been used? Uh, where, where does it come from and what is its... Um, the guaranteed energy savings, so the notion of a guaranteed energy savings project or a performance-based project is, is not new. The state statute in Illinois, I think, is over two decades old, oh. and there were companies doing this before that. Um, so the big controls companies like Johnson Controls, mm -hmm. they do this sort of thing. Um, lots of regional companies like CTS um, do this sort of thing. Um, so it's not new. The university um, is, is has a has a different vendor. They're doing um, guaranteed energy savings projects. I think they do that on kind of a rolling basis. They identify projects and select a vendor um, to do some of those projects. Good. Thank you. All right. Good. Good questions. Thank you Thank very you. much. <clears throat> Okay, we're going to do a little game playing now by Jared from our homework reading assignment. And most of us brought our books, and it's an open book, I understand. Yeah. That's, that's what I heard. <laughs> you designed it. My book is sitting on the, oh, the kitchen counter. Yes. Well, you three are going to be a team. Okay. So whoever's... Uh, and uh, most computer savvy or click is quicker. Clicker. Yes, is it, this is why is it open Google too? <laughs> if you can Google that. You probably can't. No, I don't. I don't have it. Um, That's my Chris, uh, you, you and Mike will be a team together. So I'm going to bring I'm going to bring up a, a pin that you're going to want to enter into that to enter into the game, and. Or do you want to move over by oh. Jeff, do you want to move over by Mark? Sure, because you guys only use the, uh, use the iPad. Okay. Okay. And my son is uh, uh, Jeopardy style. Yeah. Yeah. We're here. I'm just going to put this up here for now so it doesn't get crunched. Okay. Yeah. So if each uh, team would enter 7819 for your pin. Are we all seven eight one nine? Everyone, uh, everyone is seven eight one nine. All right. I typed it in and I didn't show up. I think we got to get into the little box. Oh, we're not all right. right. Yeah, so we've we got here strawberries. Where's banana? Is lit. Oh, lemon is lit. Yeah, so pick your, uh, you want to pick which one of those team icons, there's more to the right. You don't like any of those particular fruits. Oh, okay. It's going to be your team. So we could be watermelons, strawberries, lemons, bananas, oranges. They've taken that, so I guess we take that. Let's see, watermelon, strawberries, pear, I think they have troublemakers. We can be an orange or a watermelon. Just pick one. <laughs> this is the most important part. This is a food discussion. You understand? I know. I know. I know. I know. I know. I Okay, so this is a game just like Jeopardy. Um, so we're going to pick uh, based on uh, categories. Uh, I don't have a randomization thing, so maybe we'll we'll go by seniority or chairmanship, and this team can, can lead us off by picking a category and an amount. Uh, if uh, team gets it right, you'll get a check, and it will come to you. If team gets it wrong. We'll go against you, and just like in Jeopardy, you can lose you lose points if you give up the oh, wrong yes. answer. Oh yes, I'm a regular watcher. Of Jeopardy. Everybody understands. Yeah. Jeopardy thing. And not that we're gonna like keep it this way, but I, I understand. Remember to phrase your answer in the form of a question. Oh jeez. <laughs> Please get just just. Can we push buzz? Can we push buzz? I don't know what it's like. 
Okay. So on, on each one of your, I haven't actually seen. Yeah. So there's your buzzer. So if you think you, oh, know, I see if you know the, the answer. answer once the question oh, has been oh, read, okay. hit the buzzer, oh, and oh, it should <laughs> either tell me or somebody uh, picked it, and you'll and this have the is opportunity. Not, these are not touch screens. I can't. Those are not touch screens. Okay. I don't believe. Do you have the mouse, right? So hover your hover your mouse over. Oh, so you have the advantage. Oh, I'm just, oh, yeah. It's, you know, I'm just, uh, it's sometimes quicker to um, search on a file than to search. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then, so there were areas there. Well, we got well answer, right? well Okay. Give it a try. For each of these areas that we would Scott Fitzgerald, 1948. Pop up on no. they'll, they'll be bigger. Oh, so hopefully you'll be able to read them. Yeah. Okay. So <laughs> I didn't realize it was going to be so small. So, so we would we have to get you know we, the material we, inside these four five chapters, which I did a month ago. And All right. Yeah, so, right. so Mr. Chair, you have the board. Oh. <laughs> board organization of one hundred. All right. <laughs> Shut down the middle. I'm just it's it's gonna playing take shot. Night if we don't. Okay. These define the structure and function of the board and its operational procedures. Let's see the procedures. Yeah. All right. Well, Team um, Orange. What are the bylaws? Oh. State statute. Statute. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. What are the bylaws? Yeah. That's what I was thinking about. Right. Yeah. 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 Bylaws. Yes. Yeah. All right. Oh, shoot. I wasn't supposed to do that. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> you get it, you have the board though. We'll 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 add one more on the teamwork. Yes. On the teamwork to yeah. Select one. Select one. I'm you pick a category and all the right. Um <laughs> all right, why don't we do trustee duties and responsibilities for one hundred? Okay. All right, trustee duties and responsibilities for one hundred. Who, Who is the board's critical partner in administering the library? <laughs> Team Orange. Who is the executive director or the director? Who is, that is correct. Who is the library director? Yes. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> Team right. Orange, the more is yours. Yeah. 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 Good job, Team. All right. <laughs> let's, <laughs> let's, <laughs> here, let's, let's, let's. You're still on. How about saying legal responsibilities for 100? Legal responsibilities for 100. All right. The question is: The library board trustees, acting in a fiduciary role as a member of a public body, are often referred to as this. Seconds. Yeah, I know, we'll notice. Eh, all right. Oh, we have a... I, I don't think library board trustees class. are often referred to as anything. No, you <laughs> refer to library board trustees. <laughs> <coughs> well, no, all right, Team Lemon, do we have an well, answer? I thought it was what is a fiduciary, but that's not right. No. <laughs> it's got the same word there. That yeah, is it's the same word. Incorrect. The answer, well, let's see, I'm not going to show it, so it's okay. The answer is, what is a public servant? Oh, <laughs> oh. oh. Yeah. So, uh, but is, is that statement right that we are often referred to as that objectively true? <laughs> <laughs> According to the book. <laughs> yeah, well, books. This is all right out of the book. Oh. All right. All right. Beth, you're still well, on. Team, oh, there it is. Team Orange is still uh, your uh -oh, board. Okay. So select category and in amounts. All right, how about if we try new trustees in history for 100? All right, new trustees in history for 100. That's a, good, that's a good one. All right, many public libraries are legally established by cities, villages, and townships according to this. Uh, Our buzzer's not working. Our buzzer doesn't work. Oh, you got it. You're in. Oh, okay. It's um, the Illinois local. It's the Library Act, the State Library Act. That is correct. Yeah. That was easy. Yeah. Yeah. 
What is the Illinois Local Library Act? 75 nice. ILCS 5. Yeah, that's which is better than yeah. All right. Which is it is yeah. nice. team, team Lemon, you guys have control of the board. So can we buy a bowel? <laughs> <laughs> Different game. <laughs> it's your selection, Barbara. Oh, okay. So let's do policy making for 100. Policy making for 100. Right. 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 <laughs> this is written as a written principle written by the board for guiding trustees and staff in providing or in I think it's supposed to be providing, sorry. Providing the full range of library service to the community. Oh, team Lemon. Yeah, what That's is the mission statement? Incorrect. The answer is what? What yeah, is policy or policy? I was going to say that, but it's too easy. Yes, I know what too easy. Exactly. Now I can't be it. Yeah. Category and amount. Try doing that doesn't work. So. <laughs> okay. Is it our turn? Yes. 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 Okay. So trustees' duties and responsibilities for five hundred. Five hundred. All right. This duty of the board, with assistance by the director, is required by Illinois law. There are a lot of duties of the board, but this one in particular is required by Illinois law. All right. Hire the director. What is a what is hire the director? No. That is incorrect. The, the director couldn't assist. <laughs> what is providing financial information for an in independent audit? The audit is required by Illinois law. Okay. Uh, team Limited is still uh, your board. Okay. Um, we'll go for uh, board organization at 500. Board organization is a big money. All right. The treasurer. Uh, treasurer is bonded or insured and not less than this amount for all libraries except for those who miss municipalities. Oh, oh. Uh, Team okay. Orange. Um, uh, what is 50%? Yeah. Correct. She didn't know. 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 She your board. Uh, let's try new trustees in history for 200. Trustees in history for 200. All right, these types of libraries with independently defined boundaries are the alternative to the municipal library. We this two weeks ago. I have a different name. I knew this before. Generally, two types of libraries that are defined. Four seconds. Oh, let's see. Uh, it could be wrong, but let's see. Let's try oh, this. And we're out All right. Of time. Just, yeah, I did. Shimmers. Okay. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. 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 And I have district libraries, but okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Right. Am I getting any noise? Next Thursday. Just need to say, but okay. 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 Like All right, so we get another one. Um, let's say, let's do board organization for 200. Board organization for 200. According to this, libraries should publicize the schedule and location of regular meetings at the beginning of each calendar year. All right. The Open Meeting Act. That is correct. Yeah. 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 Plus, we've got to get three days' notice. Why didn't you ask that? Well, wait, that might be further down the line. Oh, shoot. <laughs> <laughs> All 
I could have picked a number of them. Yeah. All right. Uh, it is your board. Sir. Oh, 200 on le uh, legal re responsibilities. All right, 200 for legal. Okay. Local oh. libraries are legally obligated to submit this to their host municipalities. Ah, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. uh, Team Banana. That's you. Oh, I'm Banana. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> the annual report. That is correct. What is an annual report? What is the annual report? Yes. <laughs> Two, right, 200, 200 on policy making. Call, call, him, call him back. 200 for policy making. All right. Uh, these, amongst other things, must be stated unambiguously, be capable of being applied consistently and fairly, and reflect the library's goals and objectives. Biz. We've covered this once biz, before. Biz. It's not buzzing. She's okay. Biz, biz. Biz. That's buzzing. Buzz. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The buzz. Yeah, 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 buzz. You're doing so well. This is such a great way to do this. I really appreciate this. Okay, well, I guess our computer's. Let's better. continue this another it's about time. It's to update, so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for playing. Very good. Very well done. Saved by Microsoft. How are these updates Tuesday? No, this is great. Oh, boy. Saved, saved by modern technology. Yes. Oh. It's, it's, it's a website okay. that offers it. No, it's really. Okay, play back, Phil. Kathy, are you? Thank you. Oh, there she is. <laughs> Serving our public's chapter 12, safety. Uh, I don't know how to follow after that. I know. That's... <laughs> 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 a game to play. The state requires libraries to review a chapter in serving our public standards for Illinois public libraries. For um, and this is in fulfillment of the per capita requirements, uh, which is submitted each year in January. Each chapter in standards uh, provides specific standards for developing, improving, or enhancing areas of library activity and a checklist to evaluate strengths and weaknesses. This year. We were asked to evaluate Chapter 12, Safety, and in your board packet, you have the checklist that was provided in um, the standards book. After reviewing Chapter 12, we are happy to report that the library meets the safety standards as outlined. And uh, just to point out a few things, uh, highlights, we've had a few instances of practice <laughs> with many of our <laughs> standards this year between flooding and pest control and things like that. That's the key word. But there are other things that, that happen, of course. We now have a building safety checklist that is being finalized. We have an additional emergency kit for the auditorium. Uh, eight, uh, all the, we have emergency kits um, at departments. Um, we had this for a few years, but we're going to add one to the auditorium. The auditorium acts as um, uh, the library's tornado shelter, the hallway, and the auditorium is, is a tornado shelter. Um, we have also updated the posted floor plans that you see here on the wall. They have been updated to um, include all fire extinguishers and all pool stations and the location of the emergency kits throughout the li in the library. Uh, we are reviewing and updating the library's disaster plan. And this is something very new, which we're very proud of. This is an emergency quick guide. We have a comprehensive disaster plan, which is in a loosely binder. But this is something that we have provided this year for the staff. It is called an emergency flip chart, and it covers very quickly all emergency topics. This is what has been hanging in departments Oh, since, I want to say February, March, somewhere around that area, but we're updating it. And you can see I have a copy here that we're working on, which also now is going to include 
all of the locations of pull stations, and not pull stations, for shutoff locations for things like the HVAC system, for the elevators, for, uh, let's see, what else? Water, water and, and um, the sprinkler locations, so there sometimes they have to be shut off if there's, if there's an emergency. And also there is a more detailed floor plan in the back of it that includes the location of all the shut off locations. We don't want those, of course, on the public maps, so they are included for the staff as well. So, Where is that located? Where is this located? Actually, we have multiple copies all over the library in all the staff areas, okay? And this will replace it. As soon as this is complete, it will replace the ones that are already hanging up. So, um, the, uh, we've, had, uh, we've had on our maps the locations of all the sprinklers, not the sprinklers, the, the uh, fire extinguishers, and also the pull stations, but it seems like um, we did a more uh, thorough evaluation of where the location is because they, for some reason, they keep we keep finding more. <laughs> so we did a more thorough investigation. Actually, even found some on the penthouse as well. Are all shutoffs kind of in offices back away from? A lot of the shutoffs are in, like in the boiler room. Yeah. Um, there are some on the, in the penthouse in the east and west penthouse. And the sprinklers are down the hall on the left. So they're not going to So we would not expect public to grab this book and decide something because it'd have to go through them. They wouldn't have access. Yeah, we wouldn't have access. No, okay. They're all in staff locations. So they would need appropriate user access to it. Do you have any questions about anything? So that book that you had with the state standards, yes. is that the kind of thing that might be available to somebody like me that uh, I mean, can you get copies, or is it in the library or something? Sure. I wouldn't mind looking at it. And I then, have sent you links. It's online. Oh, OK. And then um, could do you think I could get a copy of your emergency thing when you get it done? Sure. It's really, I, I mean, that's really that. very, yeah. it seemed, it, you always think that you, you're you so unprepared compared to the rest of the world, and <laughs> you're not. You're like right on top of it. The rest of the world is, seriously, I mean, I, I'd really yeah. like to see that, because most people don't you have it that organized. Okay, yeah. Yeah. The new one? Yeah. Yeah, the good one. Now we have good on the new one. So, it's really working on so we saw this Arlington Heights Public Library. And then Kathy and Robin and Lynn Herman evaluated our needs and then revised the concept to be good for us. We launched it at staff day got feedback all this time and then enhanced it. It's really been a really positive project and been very helpful. So when the water was pouring from the ceiling <laughs> behind the circulation desk and down the walls, we were able to grab that as we were running around the building and- Where do we turn it off? Well. Yeah, as it turns out, it was not it a was turn off, but down we knew where to turn stuff off, but we, we did turn stuff off, let Yeah, that's say. the point that I think is critical. So, we would be happy to, we shared this with the OSHA gentleman, one of the OSHA gentlemen when he came out because he was so impressed with it. So if it would be helpful to you, we'd be happy to send no, you really like paper this electronic one. copy. But it we doesn't just, contain information that someone who wants to do mischief oh. will, <clears throat> well, that's, will find little things that can be turned and create problems. If it's again, not like that? We would not make it available right. widely for that purpose. Okay. That reason. But you would make it available to if you the to fire see. department and people like that? They will have copies. Okay. Yeah, actually, it's one of the questions in, in the standards chapter is that we do have to provide a copy of our disaster plan to fire and police. Okay. Mm -hmm. well, that makes sense. Oh, they even have a page in the back that says, if a board meeting goes too long, <laughs> and it, and it, but it ended quickly and stuff. <laughs> fire! <laughs> No, it's really, it's really quite, um, quite cool. Yeah, you know, along those ways, and probably cell phones have <coughs> uh, taken away so much need for this, but I know for disasters, emergency planning, we, we still do this. We have like a, almost a driver's license side, laminated card that we make that just has everybody's cell numbers, home numbers on it for the times when your phone is out of batteries or anything, and if you're maybe not in any place where you have cell um, range so you get things from your own phone, and it's just administrative emergency contacts. 
So it's kind of a backup to phones. And we usually have one or two people who've had to use it more than not because although all their contact information is on the phone, their phone's dead. And so they're able to pick up their handy dandy little card and then borrow somebody else's phone. That's really what happens. And then they can call the numbers right there. So again, it was, we just did that more as a backup, as kind of a partner to um, disaster guys. So. Very good. Okay, the consent agenda includes the board meeting minutes of November 14th, bills for November 15th, payroll for November 24, bills for November 29, and payroll for December 8th. Do I hear a motion? Chris, before we before we do that, oh. I have one editorial. I'm sorry. Correction. I mean, it's, no, go ahead. It, it's so minor, but on page three, paragraph three, the second line. Uh, Beth Scheid asked for further explanation about a tip in the director's report that said some issues are better addressed by budgeting than, not that. Okay? It's, it's a very typical typo. So it's than legislation. Okay? But it's not substantive, so that's why okay. I don't want to hold up the consent agenda. Move okay. approval of the consent agenda. <laughs> Second. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Okay, for action items, as you all know, we have a resignation from the board. Um, Mark is failing in health. I hate to say it, but I, I think I've told some of you that I have visited with Mark. Originally, we were going to meet someplace, and he called and canceled that, and so I went to his home. And I found him very difficult to understand. I was just having, and Anna's gone through some of this too. And so he resigned this week. And we have, no, he's resigned with the mayor and we got copies of that. Um, Celeste and I plan to visit him next week and make a copy of this proposal, uh, or the resolution I should say. And you have had an opportunity to read it, so I don't think we'll go through it. But Mark has served for, what was it? Seven? Five, Five yes, years. Mark, Mark and I came on the board at the same time. Is that right? And for that reason, I would like to be given the privilege of moving this resolution. Is there a second to that? Second. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Thank you, Anna, very much. I do regret because Mark's been a lot of help to me personally, so I'm. He would have loved this discussion tonight with uh, facilities and stuff. Yeah. That's his thing. Yeah. Uh, we have some budget adjustments. Uh, if you have looked at them, they're basically request to move money, but does not change the bottom line. Any questions? If not, do I have a motion to approve the change of the FY budget? So moved. Second. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Suppose same sign. We have no items for discussion. Actually, sorry. Okay. There's a sexual harassment policy. Yes. That's included in there, the revised. So if you wanted to discuss that with, this month as well as next month. But so approval is next month, right? That is correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I'm if, sorry there, I didn't make the agenda that if there is anything that anybody would like to question now, I thought, I don't know what the changes were. But it sounded like recent events have changed it quite a bit. So uh, is there there's a deadline for approval? Doesn't it have to be done by a certain day in January? January 16th. 16th. So, but your board meeting is January 9th. So we can do it. I don't have my copy right here, but I did notice somewhere um, something about jokes. Inappropriate jokes. Yeah, it bothered me. I could have thought of the time when... Um, I need it back. Okay. A new, a new faculty back. member, and I, she came over and sat next to me in a colloquium, and afterwards accurately said, "Now we can sleep. Now we can say we slept together," um, <laughs> which is not unusual for colloquium. But um, <laughs> you know, um, the, uh, you know, I hate to have a policy against stuff like that. Well, I think it would be covered inappropriate. I was very appropriate, of course, but um, oh, you know. 
Oh, but so, if you were in a power position and somebody said that to you and you were this young, you know, yeah. assistant professor and you were this older guy and you mm -hmm. said that to a person like that, right. you, she might take that as a pretty terrible thing for you to say, even if you were just joking. Yep. Yeah. Like, I, I, I don't think uh, in sexual harassment policy that uh, just because something is in there as uh, prohibited, it's prohibited under context. It's not that you can never make a joke, it's that if you're making uh, a joke that is offensive or uh, abusive or uh, it's, it, it, then that's not allowed. It's not that you can't make jokes, it's that you can't make jokes that make other people feel uncomfortable based on the context of the, of the policy. Does that sound correct that, that, or that am I? That sounds exactly right. There's a there's a common sense element to what jokes are appropriate, what jokes aren't appropriate, given you know, the various sensitivities. And the sensitivities have changed a lot over the years. Mm -hmm. So what was acceptable 20 years ago is no longer acceptable now. So it kind of comes yeah. with the you know, current social norms. Well, the word common sense yeah. is problematic. Yeah, well, they, they, yeah, this is true. This so is true. It's, yeah, it's... Uh, but it, it's, it's you know, whether you use the word sensitivity, yeah. but um, anything that could be deemed offensive, you just don't joke about. So I have it in my. I got to read this gigantic thing from the state. Is is the language of this pretty much pattern on what the state is putting together? I mean, are jokes included in their their legislation? This is a lot more similar to the policy that we had before. It includes, there are four prongs that need to be included in a policy and it has to be approved by ordinance or resolution. So this includes the procedures that we didn't have that we followed anyways. And, it, and so it's, it's more robust than what the state has. Okay. And they did evaluate what the state was putting forward because that came through the, I think, I think the Illinois Municipal League and then it's been shared broadly. It came through ILA as well. So the the city legal and HR evaluated that and um, felt this was again a, a better path for the city. And then we are working with them. And we think this is going to work well for us. So this is the city. Part of okay. harassment has to do with context and um, frequency. Mm -hmm. So, so if, if if a person were to make a joke to the person and you know person A made a joke, person B, person B said that's not welcome. And then you didn't make a joke again along that way. That's one thing versus you say it's not welcome, and then the person A keeps making those kinds of jokes. Yeah. 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 So that, that sounds great. Mm -hmm. I would like to somehow see the, you know, some phrase like repeated or uh, <laughs> frequency address. Well, or just somehow that 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 some message was sent that it was unwelcome, and then. And then there should be a response, not necessarily that you should automatically know who's going to like which joke. I don't recall, but does it have references to context in our policy? I will have to, I've read this so many times, yeah. I will now blank on what is involved. Don, do you recall? Yeah. In terms of frequency? Frequency. I mean, there are legal definitions of the word harassment, and that may be where part of it lays. So. We'll explore a little bit and come back to you with answers to your questions for next month. Yeah, but I'm well, when you know, happy with it. Policy that says, you know, somebody says, I don't like jokes like that. You're not well, supposed the, to tell them anymore. Human Rights Act, there's a section in there that said a rejection of such conduct by individual uses the basis. Well, wait a minute. Yeah. Are you unhappy with that it's not there? Is that what you're saying? Just that there's not, it just says, well, it's, if it's unwelcome, but not anything about message, you know, having received a message that it's unwelcome. Um, well, I think maybe this I might play into it. Unable to substantiate is not not deemed to be a false report. So that yeah, might be one in which you'd have a difficulty substantiating the fact that it was a repeat or anything like that. But it is not considered to be a false report. I think that's significant. It does say under the definition, yeah. this policy includes unwanted or unwelcome conduct. Yeah. 
Yeah, so looking at the, I've been looking at the verbal conduct definition. That's pretty comprehensive for everything we've been talking about. If you read the, the text of the verbal conduct, and, and, and even within that, so examples of such conduct include, but are not limited to, but and then there's a pretty comprehensive you. definition for physical and verbal and written and nonverbal. It, but I think Michael is also pointing out that it needs to be clear that it is unwanted, that it is yeah. um, ob objectionable. Just that it's objected to. You know, objectionable is a very subjective thing, but you yeah. know, yeah. if some particular person objects. So uh, the, yeah, under yeah. the reporting procedure, it stop, says stop that, and then it's done yes. again the next day. Then it's then it's, it's then exactly. Right. Exactly. That's exactly. exactly okay because it does say you, whoever's reporting has the responsibility to report a complaint as soon as possible. So there's the notice saying, you know, this was unwanted. But then no, not, there not to just be the to a supervisor, but to the person who has said it or whatever. So you're looking for just one extra step here. Yeah, well, exactly. One extra it. step. There's just somebody saying, yeah. Yeah. "Don't make jokes like that anymore," or something like that. You know. Yeah. It's also in the reporting procedure. It talks about it doesn't. So a person A tells a joke to person B. Person C can see that interaction <coughs> and report it as well because. They're <coughs> so. Let's take a look. This is why we have a discussion now. I'm not trying to stop it, but read it all. Think about it. Uh -huh. Shoot us any questions. We can share the questions in advance so people are on the same page with what the questions are. Again, this is very, the, the law around harassment, we're, we're stepping a little bit above what the law is because we want people to be really comfortable. And we're wanting to be very clear so that if people are wondering, is this okay or not, they've got something to look at either from the, yeah. is it okay if I do this thing versus this happened to me, I don't feel comfortable, am I protected? Is there anything in here about gender? It's for males, females? And it's, it's about protected classes. Yeah, okay. I mean, I'm, what but I'm saying is I think it should be for everybody. Yes. 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 Absolutely. And I have At the beginning of all policy, it says all persons mm -hmm. have a right. Yes. Yeah. Okay. yes. But protected classes yes. are also called out because yes. this, the respectful work environment is not only about sexual harassment. No. Yes. That is an important element yeah. of it, but it's not the only piece. Right. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Just checking. because. Yeah. Okay, that will be voted on the next meeting. So if you've got other questions, record them with have them ready to bring forward. Um, other discussion items? Seeing none, we go to the library. Friends, Anna? Uh, no, we, not until February, March, February something. March. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, the foundation. The hmm. letters have gone out. There was an article in the paper, mm -hmm. the, yes, new, yes. the news, I mean, the TV caught it. Um, I've already heard one objection to the fact that it looks like you're raising money for the front porch, but I think that it was necessary to say what we need. <laughs> I, 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 I guess people don't like the front porch or something, I don't know. <laughs> That's always been a part of the building and everybody's argued for it. Anything else do you think have from the foundation? We have actually had some donations, some large donations with um, people's distributions that some people are in a position to have to spend out at a at particular end of the year time. So um, one person donated $6,000. Uh, one person just donated a gift of stock, um, which is valued at $10,000. Okay. So, um, and that particular one is for landscaping for the corner lot. Mm -hmm. So that's exciting to have people interested in different parts of what the foundation is supporting the library board in, and the library in. Yeah. Cool. Heartland, anything new? Um, yeah, we have to have an emergency meeting because we don't usually meet till late in the month, so we have to have an emergency meeting to approve this uh, policy about uh, harassment and stuff for the state. So um, I've got this thought. I've but, but this is like, this is what it's all about. It's like where it pumps into freedom of the press and academic freedom and sitting around making jokes and stuff. It's like going to be a dodgy area. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't know that you can put it all in print and 
not have problems with it. So. But anyway, um, and um, Rachel's on there, on uh, been appointed to one of their um, committees to for membership or um, search committee, search committee, yes. and, um, and um, we're starting to hire people. So the personnel committee is gearing up to approve like positions that have been vacant since the budget shortfall and whatnot. So, other than that, and there's this one issue, and I was going to ask you about it. Um, the state, um, through a de decision of the Secretary of State's office, says that the board, the IHLS board, has to approve all hires, every hire. So they've had to rejigger their hiring process so that they can't start somebody until we have a meeting and say, yes, they're hired. And it occurred to everybody all of a sudden that, you know, it's just a rubber stamp thing, but that doesn't seem appropriate somehow that we just, oh yeah, these are who we're hiring, yep, go ahead. So it's starting to throw that into a bit of a spin. It's like, well, tell us about this person. Well, we shouldn't have to tell you about that person. The director hires that person. It's like a very odd kind of thing. And I was wondering if the state, if the state library's decision on this would affect other libraries, not, huh? Mm -hmm. Okay. The library systems are different than the district. And okay. That. It's interesting because that's how the university screwed up with Salado. You know, yeah, yeah. He, he'd yeah. given up his tenured job and was listed mm -hmm. to teach courses and was buying a house or something, and I said, Right. Oh, the trustees don't approve it. Well, everything you know, is fine sudden, until well, they um, right. proposed hiring somebody for a, an IT job, and he was previously a sorter in the back room. And so the question was, well, does he have the cred credentials? credentials? But of course, the director would say, not the credentials. You know, I mean, but then are we grilling the director as to whether she did due diligence, and is that appropriate? It's like an odd sort of position to be in, and it's not even written. It's like a decision that the Secretary of State's office sort of made, you know. And stuff. I, I just wondered if it applied to us, and it doesn't, so never mind. Other than that, everything's swinging along and... <laughs> swinging along. Swinging, I was going to say. Administrative report. Celeste. Good stuff for you. We put up on our website, um, there's a little tile on our front page that says something about receiving feedback on the corner lot. We've already had people submitting comments of things they'd like to see at the corner lot. I talked about, um, on the web page itself, it talks about how we need to, I recommend that we look at the corner lot development, whatever that means, development. Whether it's planting a field of posies or whether it's whatever happens next. Um, whatever happens next is going to be impacted by the M4 project. So the M4 project is Green Street here at Race all the way through Campus Town into Champaign. It's millions and millions of dollars, state money, federal money, city money, university money. It's an amazing project that's going to make that whole corridor a beautiful transfer back and forth. You, the library board, have control of the two pieces of property, north and south, of where Race and Green Street come together. And you have the opportunity to think about what kind of stop when people come from Champaign and Campus Town to downtown Urbana at Race and Green, you want that to look like. The city's going to start a project where they're going to be looking at Lincoln Square Mall and downtown and all kinds of things. So um, this is a really exciting place for the library board to be in because you're going to be right in the center of all the conversations about visioning for what happens in this part of the city. So that's going to be exciting. But M4, if you think about entrance to the library parking lot, it's on Green Street. Okay. And if Green Street is torn up for a couple of months or a few months, there will be no access to our public parking lot for a couple of months, through Green Street at least. So there are other options. There will be a discussion uh, early part of the year for final design for what's going to happen with the MCOR project. We will be involved in those discussions. Um, one thing that is possible that could happen is we put a temporary driveway from Race Street through the green lot to get us into the to get patrons cars into the parking lot and to exit through the one-way street by the book drops because right now we just have the one-way yeah. exit that way uh, another option would be to be take out the sidewalk take out the bus out take out, out the bike racks and bring people in there um, but we 
you could tell people you just can't use the lot for several months and you need to park in the structure. There, there are options, but we don't know what all the options are because those design conversations haven't happened yet. <coughs> we just want to put it out there that at the very least, we know that a percentage of the corner will be taken. Will be taken so that larger vehicles, buses and whatnot will be able to have a better turn radius. And that will, until that work is done, we, you, I recommend that you don't make final plans for that corner. So 2018 is this upcoming summer. Mm -hmm. We can do some, I would recommend some type of lighter plantings if we're gonna do something this summer. And then 2019 is when all the construction is gonna happen. So that would probably be some type of down year. And then think, be thinking ahead to what you want that to look like for 2020. So as we learn more about what the timeline will look like, we will share that with you. But this is what, this is how things look like they're pacing themselves out right now. I appreciate you saying that this board will make a decision as to what happens out there. We're getting ideas, but we will be making some decisions as needed, <laughs> I guess, yeah. Is there some way when this planning is going, this is I guess a chicken and the egg question, that you have an opportunity to say, or that we have an opportunity to say, the plan's got to have a driveway. In other words, or are we going to be presented with a plan and then have to carve a driveway out? You know what I'm saying? We're going some to way to get it in there ahead of time so that it's part of the design. The driveway was something that Public Works recommended. So, because okay. so, I, 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 you know, whatever. I had said and there were impacts to businesses whose driveways were closed or rerouted yeah. when the projects were happening in Champaign, and I was going to go to a meeting to learn yeah. more about it, talk to Public Works, and they said, well, you know, we'll, we'll think about these things with you as these comes. Oh, by the way, you might need a new driveway too, like light bulb. Yes, yes, we might. Thank yeah. you. So they, the, the city Somebody. just looks out for the library in so many ways. Okay. They're fabulous. One of the things that has come up is somebody has offered some design. And we're not saying that that's not acceptable to offer, but we're not saying we accept either. Okay. Is that fair? Right now, I'm focused more on what the MCOR design is going to look yeah. for. But there's, like I say, there's already been an offer. Mm -hmm. uh, and we're not saying that that has necessarily been accepted. And I think that the, the website says, give us your ideas. But that has lots of ways to go before that time. Mm -hmm. But this board will be making a decision as to what does take place. Yeah. So it seems like this MCOR thing would be integrally connected with what we do on the corner, or could be. Yes. Mm -hmm. I.e., they could say, let's cut that corner off and make an easy turn there, and we could lose some property, I mean, or lose the use of a certain thing. We're going to get paid for what we lose. Well, but I, I mean, it's, it would seem like we should, we should see what's going to happen with the whole thing before we decide what we're going to do on that corner. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I think well, so. and we're That's also talking about suggesting. several steps here. One mm -hmm. is, the actual process of doing the MCOR, yes. which is going to impact how do people get Operations. to the library. Yes. And the other issue is the longer term, yes. how is it ultimately going to look? Yes. So it's really... And given Windsor Road and Green Street, if they say it'll be like a month, it probably <laughs> be they two <laughs> years, so you know. Yes. They've yeah. been doing a good job with the timeline with mm -hmm. it, but yes, so when, when I was told months, it would be months, I thought ran out it will be months. Yeah. If the state it's, runs out of money again, we might be yes. there yeah. in the same spot mm -hmm. where the Illini Union was. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. and to prevent the idea that we're going to grow a patch of weeds out there, we might be doing something interim. That's right, yes, yeah. yes, yeah. yeah. So okay. short term, long, mid term, and long term. Yeah, right. Can I just say one, uh, one, one thing I forgot, the IHLS board got rid of one of the board members because they weren't coming to enough meetings and it was kind of tense, but they voted this person off the board. But they have an opening now and they would like somebody from this part of the state. And we talked about maybe one of the Champaign trustees and I don't know that, I didn't do anything, but. It, they, they'd like to get somebody in really quickly rather than wait for a election cycle. So if you could exert any pressure on somebody, that would be cool. I would be happy to, um, can you shoot me an email and I'll reach out to Donna and let her know there's an opening? Yeah, but then you need to go over there and say, I'm one of these guys. And, <laughs> okay, no, I just wanted to remind you. Yeah, that's uh, good. That's good. I will, I will get the word out. Good.
Do you have the other things for the report, Celeste? Um, informational piece, we have been talking with you about net neutrality. You've probably been reading about it, hearing about it, so there are different symbols out there talking about it, but um, one of the ones that the ILA put out is um, the internet shouldn't have a slow lane, so the tortoise and the hare net neutrality allows everyone to travel at the same speed. And if the net neutrality goes away, people will be able to pay for better service, which will impact everyone, business owners, yeah. individuals, uh, everybody. <coughs> so the, the ask is to contact your legislator to have them tell the FCC they don't want them to vote for the change in net neutrality, the, to keep net neutrality. That um, the, the meeting is going to be scheduled for December 14th at the FCC. Today's the 12th. So if you have not called and you're interested in doing that, this is your moment. I've heard they might delay it because there's been so much outcry. You can ask for a delay as well. That's the, there's two asks. Oh, okay. Say. I see. So we can ask for a delay. Okay. But still, if there's a delay <coughs> and you want net neutrality, then the next step is to say, don't yeah. take it away. Yeah. Thank you for that. Chris, I've been tr trying to figure out where to say this, and since our oh. <laughs> advocate for legislative ac Activity. action, etc., had such a wonderful letter in the paper thank you, thank today, you. Yes. I have it here for her, but oh. I thought it was beautifully done, and I commend you, and I thank you on behalf of all of us. Um, and it didn't mention the legislature, but I it thought didn't, this I, was the perfect message for for the time and the situation. I decided to keep politics out of it. I mean, it was an intentional decision, and I don't know. I mean, but then I can follow up with other stuff. Yeah, they give me one. I can do one letter a month. Oh, so so far I've been doing one letter a month yeah. since. A I while. thought this was a particularly good. Thank one, you. So yes. I don't want thank you, Barbara. Mention it. Sure. Thank you. And Other. Celeste gave me the perfect opportunity, so thank you. <laughs> yeah. oh, thanks. Uh, because of her vacancy, I have asked uh, Barbara Jones and Jane Williams to serve as a uh, ad hoc committee to come forward by next meeting with a nominee to serve as vice president. Uh, I would assume that that would, and I'm just saying, I'm assuming that would be to fill out Mark's term and that the that we would then I would then appoint a nominating committee for the officers in March, April. April, to make the nominations, and that person might or might not be wanting to, to continue. So uh, I'd like to ask Barb and Jane to serve on that committee to give us a name for next month's meeting. Anything else that come before the board tonight? If not, I see no other business. I declare the meeting adjourned. <laughs>